Hello, guys, I'm testing. Can you hear me out there? Perfect. So I will just start in one minute, just so people can come in. So let's start. As some of you know, we have a Rapido 3.1 release here end of February, and I will try to present some of the things that we have working on in that roadmap. I'm Jennifer, by the way. I'm the product manager for Rapido, and I will try to present some of the things here during this webinar. So I will first go through some of the things that has been implemented in Dynamic Web 9.6, which we have corroborated in Rapido as well. So first off, we have this um, image focal point, which is implemented in the 9.6 release. Um, we have decided to apply that in Rapido, so it's possible to, to select a focal point in, uh, on an image. So for example, in this example, we have uh, the focus on this moon, um, and it will crop that um, section to place that focus on it, which was a bit uh, difficult beforehand with the different or the, with the existing crop mode that we have before. Another thing that we have worked on together with our backenders are the color swatches. Um, it was really tedious when working in website settings. Um, you need to either remember the hex code or copy it around throughout the website settings, and now we have defined something called color swatches, where you can define five brand colors and five neutral colors. So the, these kind of color swatches are um, globally on your website. So if you edit it in website setting one place, it will automatically be edited everywhere where you have the color swatches. Um, so you can reuse the same color and not remember that kind of hex code. And these color swatches will also be presented in the paragraph uh, contain as well. So when creating a content, you can see what brand color one actually is instead of just having the text brand color one. Um, besides that, we also have this color suggestions as well, where we have different kind of method. Um, you can use it. So for example, you have, you can select a color a blue color based of that, and then have different kind of color methods, um, uh, for example, complementary or uh, in different shades, and then it will generate a uh, brand color one to five regarding that. Or you can select this kind of method that is shown in the slides where we have, um, when we insert an image, and then the color will be based on, on the presentation of the colors in that image, and it will get generate out from that. Next point is that we have uh, playing a bit around with presets in website settings. Um, we haven't added presets all over website settings yet, but we are planning to work furthermore with this in the future. Um, but we have done some different kind of set examples. For example, in the uh, product list, um, the list grid and details view, but also in the card, uh, mini card as well. The thing is with the preset is that you actually can define some settings and save it, and then you can reuse it um, in, the, in your different sites as well. So you can, for example, have in this uh, scenario, I have uh, three different settings for a grid view with some different kind of combination, but I just need to uh, click on one of them and then have a three column grid or a four column grid with some different kind of um, settings in them, which is predefined. Um, the good thing is that you can create your own presets and then the, a fourth preset will just appear here besides the grid view, for example, with your own settings as well. So this is a way to save, um, save time because instead of choosing between um, 
five different settings, for example, in the grid view, you can just select the one of them and then, but you still, but you still have the possibility to edit some of the minor things in the settings because I know that you guys want to, to still be able to do that. Next up is content and marketing. So one of the tedious things that has been with um, the content area um, regarding uh, news, blog, news and blogs and so on, that is that there have been really very static. I mean, you, you could have a list and then you can insert a title, image and text and that's it. So we have played more about um, this new concept called dynamic articles where we actually have uh, different sections. This example doesn't really show it, but we have different sections. For example, this carousel, um, where you have some popular uh, articles that you want to show, and then you have this um, grid view shown below in here. And then we worked about work regarding that you could, I have some more examples here, but we worked around the different kind of layout that you can pick upon. So we have like four column grid, three column grid, two column grid, et cetera, but you could also show it as a list or some as a slider in top of your section as we have in here, or add uh, the, in this section, we have something called related. It could also be something called popular, but some articles that you do want to highlight in the uh, right side of the page. So um, yeah, so you can add different kind of look to articles right now and for your news or blogs etc you could reuse some of the design that you have but you could also differentiate them as as you want and um, the same goes for the articles we have worked about that and we also have some different kind of setup of how the articles could be um, and have more opportunities to enrich your content by adding more image to it uh, videos or if you want to highlight a quote in your articles, you can also do that. In this case, we also try to give an example of um, where you can have a, a form, for example, in your article. It could also be if you want to promote a single product, um, you can do that. Um, we also worked about, um, in, it is not shown in this slide, but there's a, in the bottom section, we have some some other articles that is related in the same category. And as you can see here, we have different kind of uh, um, layout for the article as well. If you either want to have a banner or if you want to have different kind of top view or the width of it, we have worked around that. That And also, as mentioned before, have the more have, have more possibilities of adding more kind of text videos and image to it before that we didn't had so mu much more dynamic and also we have created this kind of dynamic uh, articles so um, you can you can take a copy of the articles that we have and then also uh, remove those fields that is not necessary for example if you don't need a uh, a related section or codes or videos, you can remove that section. So, for example, in in a newsletter, if you want to have it much more specific, you can remove those kind of section without ruining the template. So you can make a specific one for news, for blogs, for some kind of a campaign, whatever it is. So there's not all these fields uh, that they use and needs to. Um, to, to, to look at or fill out if it is not necessary. But we will try to write a guide regarding this, how, how you can edit this item type. Another thing that is also has also been important is to show this kind of articles um, other places than just the article section, but also to show it, for example, in in the landing page or in the front page and it actually just uh, links to for example in this case just links to that that page and then you can sort it by the newest article as an example um, and then it will just show it down here and here you can also decide uh, maybe a different look for it um, either with a three column 
grid view or a two column, depending on what fits your website. But now you can you can actually just uh, take it and place it in the landing page. We had some kind of function functionality before, but we worked a lot with this item publisher, which uh, which was a bit more trickier to set up. So we tried to simplify that by uh, creating this dynamic article paragraph. Next up is this kind of improvements. We actually have this as a hotfix before, but I will just mention it again. But we have this notification overlay where we are able to um, set up some, some kind of cookies regarding uh, when it should appear. So for example, it will not appear every time you enter a page, but you can set if it should appear every 24 hours, if then days, 30 days, or if it should be permanently be uh, removed when a specific, uh, if a call to action button is clicked. Also, you can now define it for different users as well. If you, if some specific group of user, they, if they log in, they should see one type of overlay. If it's another type of user, then they can see another. So you can really uh, place this kind of overlay or pop up um, for that specific kind of section or interest on this kind of uh, area. Another thing that we have worked on is um, an employee list, because most most of the time um, on a website you want to present who is working in your shop or in your department. So the way it works is that it's actually the users are created in the user management, and we actually just gather those kind of information in this type of template. And there's this. Um, uh, fields that you can fill out, name, title, email, phone, job title, department, company, and uh, for example, a link, in prof uh, a link to LinkedIn. Um, so if these kind of fields are filled out, it will be presented in here. And then we have two different templates for this, uh, one for a three column grid and one for four column grid, so you can present it in different ways. And then you can also uh, filter it through the department category, which is up here in the right corner. Then when we go further to e-commerce, um, we have applied this um, newsletter product list um, on it because beforehand it was a bit complicated when, because you could add product to, to your newsletter. However, it was a bit complicated because you need to attach an app on it, a product catalog um, and then set up a query and so on. So that was, it was a bit tedious the way it, it works. So we have looked at um, creating this kind of item type with a product list where you actually just uh, create a header and select the layout because you can either have it as a two column here or as a list and define a button if you want to. And then actually just select the different kind of products that you have in the shop and then it will be presented on the the, on the newsletter, so it's a way. It's a bit easier way to to pinpoint those products that you do want to show in this kind of newsletter. So another thing that we also have work, uh, worked on regarding e-commerce is regarding the mini card, um, because um, depending on what kind of product you have um, and also what kind of show you have, you might might um, want to present it a bit differently. So we have the typical drop down. That is one that we we, we had before, but we also work with um, a mini card with an overlay and then the panel version as well. And we also have um, different kind of looks on it. Right now, I think, yes, I only have the table view as we've shown here, but we also have a, a more list view, which is much more visual. Um, where the images are bigger and maybe are more suitable if it's, for example, regarding clothing or furniture, which is much more um, more visual that needs to be presented in here. However, if you have a shop that requires that or that you know that customer add a lot of product in the card uh, table view like this will probably be best. Another thing that is added in the customer center is the RMA. 
So now it is possible regarding on the current um, order that you have, be able to uh, create a request regarding if they want to return a product. Um, and yeah, there are, there are, they can they can return it, uh, create a content. They have like there's a history that will present present it on the customer center. Another thing that we have is the Google Merchant feed in order if you want to promote a product in there and it will be possible to integrate to the Google Merchant Center as well. Then we have done some minor improvements um, regarding the e-commerce. Right now in the top section, we have this different kind of layout where the thumb section should be uh, in a product page, for example, you have this main default image and then you have the smaller alternative image besides it. Um, there have been a lot of requests to be to have the the alternative image placed below the image. It is now possible and it's also possible to to hide the thumb but just have a slider on it as well. And um, also another request was um, beforehand it was really only the left upper corner where the sticker, the sales sticker or new sticker or custom sticker could be placed. It is now possible to, to move it below as well, either left or right. And because there can be some images where the focus is more on the top of the image and there will be, um, it will be hiding those kind of details if you have it in the left upper top section with the sticker. So you can change that for now. Next up is some different options for um, the variant list on the product page. Um, it is now possible to hide the image for the variant or hide the product number as well. It's just a little thing and we also have um, on a product to be able to show inclusive and exclusive that as well. Then we have the digital warehouse. So regarding the digital warehouse, um, we have decided to merge the digital warehouse functionality into, uh, I'm sorry, into Rapido because beforehand it was actually two projects that was running and it was really hard for us to maintain those things. So we, have taken those functionalities and then added to the standard Rapido. So we are able to reuse it on, on the same, same site. So for example, here we have, you're able to add products to a download card where you can um, um, download a, a product, product, the product information of it. Um, so it worked work as the same before, but we have gotten rid of the, the panel that we have. And also in the, when you are in the product detail, we have just applied uh, product assets and generate PDF in the product detail itself. So you can just have it here beforehand. We just have it in the panel. Um, the great thing about this, because we uh, corroborated uh, inside um, the standard Rapido is that you can actually uh, have this product assets and generate PDF in your regular um, e-commerce site where you don't need to have the digital warehouse set up, but you can just apply it, uh, apply it as a tab as we see here. And then, yeah, we also have the digital assets just to show the different kind of uh, metadata keywords on a, on a picture as we see here. It's pretty much the same, but we are just um, updated it a bit regarding of the regarding the functionalities we already had in Rapido. So when we look at general improvements, this, these are really minor things, but um, we have looked at it anyway because I know that it has been a bit issue for some of you guys. Is that um, in the, for example, navigation menu? Um, you can now adjust the space between the um, the menu item uh, of there, so there it's much more airy. Um, and then in a, in a paragraph as well, we have applied something called inner padding. 
because beforehand it was really um, tight. The the uh, the text was really out in the corner, and you couldn't really edit the padding. So we have applied this inner padding with some predefined sizes, uh, as you already know it from some other areas. We have used it, but we have like small, medium, large, and extra large. So you can define that so you have this much more air around your text. And then in general, we have applied more padding around our product list, facets, and so on. So the text is not um, right besides the border. Another thing we have applied for the uh, paragraph as well is that uh, an out to width. Um, as you know, we are, we are able to set one third, two third kind of width. And then if you, for example, have a half uh, paragraph, then you know next time you need to add a half paragraph as well. However, this out to width is, is just adjusting to, to, to the size. So for example, if you add a, a paragraph with one third, then you know the next paragraph will be two third in the width. So you don't need to calculate it each, each time. Another thing that we have worked on and which we are thinking to work much more is about um, uh, introducing components uh, into Rapido. And right now it's still in the experimental stage, so there might come some minor breaking changes regarding this. But the main idea is actually um, for the developers, we want to add the possibility to use these components um, in order to help them uh, implement a much more, well, much more easier for them as well. Um, so we really want to work more with this, so just much more easier to when creating a template. And this kind of components, you can actually, this page that you see here in the slide, you can actually see that. So if you have your site, just uh, write slash components, and then you will see this kind of uh, guide we have for the different kind of components. Next up, um, if you do, you can either download the Rapido 3.1, as you can in the, our doc site, where we have the different packages. We, I think we have four or five different packages right now, so you can do that. Um, but if you do have a 3.0 solution and you want to upgrade it to 3.1, please take the upgrade package, and then um, there is a link below just to show you how you should upgrade it, because there are some steps that you need to, to do in order for it to be upgraded, because we have introduced this color swatch, for example. So just, just go uh, to the link and just see the guide. And that will help you. Else we have, oh, else we have uh, the links for the release notes. Um, and then a guide for the uh, Rapido upgrade, as mentioned, and a link for the download. Um, and this presentation is recorded, and the slide will also be sent to you guys. Um, so no worries for that. Um, and let me see, there are some questions here. Um, so Martin is writing our articles and item-based replacement for the news app. Um, if you're referring for the um, news and uh, blogs that we have earlier, the static one, as I, <coughs> as I will call them, um, we have not uh, replaced them. It is still there. We have, though, updated them with the, uh, with the new design, so it a bit follows the dynamic articles. But the, we haven't removed them. We have created this dynamic article thing because we couldn't integrate it with the with the other things that we have. So if you do want to use the dynamic articles, then you should start over because it's not. They are two different concepts. One of them is if you just want to have some really basic one and the dynamic web. Oh, I'm sorry, the dynamic articles. Um, it's much more complex, and if, that is if you do want to have like different kind of elements in there. Uh, videos, quotes, and yeah, much more in there, then you should try to use that. So it, it's for different kind of purpose. 
And Sean writes, is there a free tax area at the employee card? Um, no, there isn't. Um, um, there, right now, there is uh, those kind of fields that I mentioned to you with the name, title, company, department, and so on. Um, however, if you do want to have this free tax area, you need to apply them it as yourself. And then Sean also mentioned, can I make focus point on a video also? Well, as it is right now, you cannot. So it is only for images. Does anybody have more questions? No? Well, I think I will end it here then. And thank you for listening. Goodbye.